Good, good afternoon and welcome to Congleton High School School Report on Thursday the 27th of March. I'm Adam. And I'm Letitia. The main stories for today are global warming, the effect gaming has on our education, cyberbullying, competitiveness in sport, and you can also join us as we follow the journeys of the Premier League champions. But first, Congleton's residents have been in fine voice as they express their feelings towards proposed housing in the town. One of the reasons why people come to Congleton is its location. It's located near some busy urban areas, including Stoke-on-Trent and Manchester. But another reason is the open green countryside. But with developers wanting to build 2,000 homes on this open countryside, soon this countryside could become an extended Congleton. And if the developers get their way, this will happen with housing estates being built in a number of locations, including behind me here, behind Cong Cong Congleton High School. In addition to the land behind the school, there are plans to build 300 houses off Padgeby Lane, with residents furious and their anger is seen through signs outside their homes stating no to houses and yes to green fields. There is further opposition to the proposal of over 100 houses off Wags Road and Fall Hollow, with arguments that it will ruin animal habitats and create a death trap for local residents. De developer Seddon Homes wants to create two neighbouring estates in Congleton off Goldfinch Close and Kestrel Close near Moss. They've already demolished the Moss Inn pub in Mossley with a plan for the site to become new houses. This has faced heavy opposition from residents with a hundred people objecting to the plans. They argue that if the homes were to be built that it would damage open countryside and cause further transport problems. Not bad actually. We don't want any more. Put it that way. We've got enough as it is. I think the thing you've got to be very careful, especially in Congleton, is that there's a lot of congestion in the roads at the moment. And I think the planning should be done more effectively as to where the houses are situated. Certainly, if we look at the wagon and the horses round about in the mornings, we've got quite severe congestion. Um, I have nothing against housing as long as it's uh, strategic in the right places and doesn't always eat too much into the green belt. Well, not very happy about it really because uh, I like Congleton, the fact that it's a, it's like a nice rural town, or it used to be anyway, and now with these new houses being built it's just getting bigger and bigger. There's no need for it really. The residents of the town, they already know that c traffic congestion is a problem in Congleton. A strain which will be increased if the, development, uh, the developers get the go-ahead to build hundreds of houses. As a result, Cheshire East Council have made proposals for a link road, a plan which will cost around £70 million. The two-year construction is set to start in 2016 and is said to be essential for the economic growth of Congleton. However, residents are split. Don't get me off on a link road. I can't even cope with the flipping roundabout at crew. Never mind another link road. <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. I think uh, it's, it's catch-22, really. A link road will obviously take away a bit of uh, business from the town centre. But certainly, uh, the link road is probably more than overdue. It should have been done many years ago. Uh, and I guess at some point they'll have to do it. So, yeah, I think it's positive that they should be planning ahead for that. It might be good for the congestion in Congleton because that is a is a big problem, but uh, again, it's just um, urbanising Congleton, and I don't think it's right. People like Congleton, the fact that it's it's uh, it's quaint and things like that. And it's just taking it away from it. It's not um, an individual town anymore. Is sport all about winning, or is it the taking part that counts? This is something Laura and Chloe have been investigating. Very competitive, yes. No, I think it was uh, when I was a kid, just I got used to, I was very lucky, I got used to winning and I loved that the feeling of winning is, uh, is, very, is, is, a, is a great feeling. So I think I just got used to it now and I just loved to win and all that and working as a team and just winning as a team as well. No, uh, my mum was very good actually. She, uh, she was always re really good with me about if you win, win with pride, and if you lose, lose with, lose with dignity. Because I was, I was really, I was quite bad when I was a kid because I used to win. If I didn't win, I'd sulk, I'd moan, I'd get angry. Um, but then I sort of grew up and she used to say, you're going to lose with dignity, learn. And so she said, if you, if you don't win, then you, lose, then you learn, you don't lose. And, and that really helped me when I got older. And it's helped me now. And it's just something I try and pass on to the kids now. Um. Not really. My parents, I think my parents kind of got me into sport. Like, I did it naturally at school. And then, um, but they didn't really encourage me to be competitive. It, it's kind of brought on with the game, 
you I think it's just either you're competitive or not. You either want to win or you want to lose. In other news, live pigs have been blown up and used for target practice in the battlefield injury test. 115 pigs have died in attempt to see if they can survive blast wounds. And purposeful wreckage of flight MH370 has been discovered. A satellite has spotted 122 objects in the Indian Ocean. North Korean dictator orders all men to have his hairstyle. Kim Jong-un has forced all North Korean men to cut their hair exactly the same as him. And the British Medical Association is planning to ban the sale of cigarettes to people born since 2000. Coldplay frontman Chris Martin and actress Gwyneth Paltrow end their relationship after 10 years of marriage, a huge shock for all fans. And two, two, two children, one age only six months, have been pulled out alive from an American mudslide. Last week, £51.2 million pounds were raised for sport relief. Many schools have donated along with famous celebrities. And how does gaming affect education? This is something that Letitia, Olivia, Jessica, Kaylee, and, Arab and Arabella and Joe have been looking into. Hello, my name is Letitia. And my name is Kaylee. Our topic for today is gaming and education. We've explored the world of gaming and the people in it. Students and teachers agreed to take part in our investigation. Here's Jessica with more. My name is Jessica, and I'm going to interview some fellow students and teachers to investigate this case further. Are you a gamer? Yes, I am. Yes, obviously. I'm coming in year nine, or actually um, doing computer games and creating their own games. It helps with um, programming and learning basically how to how to make a character do something on the screen. Um, it helps with coordination, it helps with literacy, maths, lots of different lots of different aspects of um, using computer games in, in our lessons helps develop those skills. We spoke to Miss Early, a media teacher. Let's see what she has to say. Gaming's had quite a negative rap in the press and in fact Playing games that involve repeated actions, such as Tetris, can strengthen brain connections which can help with memory and learning, which will help you in your education. Also, playing games can release the hormone dopamine, which makes you happy and ready to learn. In conclusion, gaming has had a negative reputation. We've now found that gaming can have a benefit to our education. This has been Arabella, Patricia, Olivia, Jessica and Kaylee in BBC Schools Report. With more people playing video games, cyberbullying is going to become even bigger. But what exactly is cyberbullying? This is Joseph Jacob Alexander reporting for our BBC Schools Report. We have been investigating different ways of cyberbullying. This is important because the number of iPads and iPods have grown in the last couple of months, meaning that there's more chance of someone being cyberbullied. Firstly, we asked some pupils about what they knew about cyberbullying. Um, well... Cyberbullying is basically bullying, but it's on the internet. Where one child bullies another using a device connected to the internet. It's when you get bullied on the internet. Somebody said mean things or something that you don't feel comfortable with. We spoke to Mr Davis, an ICT teacher, and some Year 7s about what they learned in ICT. Bullying is a really bad thing anyway. Cyberbullying is even worse because it's done without sight, it's done as an invisible thing and it's it's even more cowardly than, than any other type of bullying. It can occur when they don't consider the implications of what they say and do online. The main ways that we can stop it is by educating people more. Uh, for example, the assemblies that we've done with every year group, we are trying to educate students about the, the dangers of cyberbullying, the risks of it and the, the long-lasting implications of it. Well for me social networks are about information and they're about giving information, they're about gathering information and communicating so keeping in touch with people that you haven't seen for a long time, getting information about you know, world events, things that you're interested in. Um, they're not about making faceless comments to people and they're not about you know an opportunity to just be horrible to people. In terms of social media, the problems with things like Snapchat have been resolved with um, changes to the app. So I think if you're using it responsibly, then there's no real social media in the mainstream that, that can't be used properly. I think it's important that we learn about cyberbullying so that people can understand more why people are affected by it. Well, we've learned how we can stop it and report it 
the different case through different cases and we've also learned why it's wrong. The actual definition of bullying is as follows. It is behaviour that's repeated, intended to hurt, but cyberbullying is the use of electronic communication to bully a person, typically by sending messages of an intimidating or threatening nature. So to conclude, it appears students seem to be getting a solid education about cyberbullying. Here's some top tips to help your to you avoid cyberbullying. And global warming has become a, a, a pressing issue, as Laura and Chloe explain. I'll be worried about global warming because it's an ongoing issue. I heard on the news the other day that we're going to end up with more uh, rainy uh, winters like we've recently had with all the floods and more of the hot summers that we had last year. And that's because of global warming and um, it is going to, I think it's going to happen, I think it's a reality and some countries, particularly America, don't seem to believe that what we are doing with our industries and with our carbons is affecting the world, but it really is. It's a problem that we've got, we need to take on board and respond to positively. These kind of stores have, over recent years, have grown in popularity as more people come to shop at them. We went to the local shopping centre and asked some people where they shop normally. Where do you normally shop at? Tesco. Actually, more people are starting to shop at cheaper supermarkets like Aldi. Why do you think this is? Because they are cheaper. Um, I shop at Aldi as well. I do the main shop in Tesco and then shop at Aldi just to top up. Things like milk um, and cheese, a lot cheaper in Aldi. Where do you normally shop at? Food shopping, I go to um, Aldi. This weekend. Why do you think this is a better alternative than the mainstream shops? Because the food there is more affordable, there's everything that we need, the meats, the cheeses. Where do you normally shop at? I uh, shop at many places, Tesco, Aldi, Asda, Argos, you name it. Which one do you prefer? Whichever is cheapest. So why do you think um, cheaper supermarkets are a better alternative? Because cheaper supermarkets get more customers, so cheaper stuff, more customers, they get more money rolling in.